Hey everybody, this is Caroline and we are upon another 3D printing video. This is going to be more of a little update on Octopi and how I'm using it. In a previous video I showed you how I set up Octopi with AstroPrint and my phone and I could monitor prints remotely. And in another previous video I showed you how I could monitor prints using OctoPrint Anywhere. A link to those if you're interested. Now the original OctoPrint video that I did with my Raspberry Pi here was a multi-step process, it was kind of a complicated process. And recently one of my viewers, thank you viewer, reached out to me and said, hey, I try to follow your instructions and it was, it was really complicated and then it didn't work at the end. I looked at it and realized that there is an easier way to do OctoPrint now with your 3D printer and a Raspberry Pi. And I am going to go through that entire tutorial in this video so please stay tuned uh, the other updates i've done to my 3d printer is i have added it's on the back so you can't really see i have 3d printed a stabilizer for the x-axis i did not do so for the y-axis that is probably coming up so really kind of minor updates that i've done to the 3d printer since the last time i talked to you let's get started on a full install start to finish of octo print on a raspberry pi the materials I'm using for this project are my 3D printer, of course. This is an ANET A8. Um, I do have a video of where I put it together. It did take me about six hours to put this thing together. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. You will need a power supply specific for your Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. I am using a webcam. You've seen this in previous videos. And then you will need the cable that connects your 3D printer to the Raspberry Pi. And then also last but not least, you will need a micro SD card. And we will flash this micro SD card in this video. To start the setup of our OctoPi, I'm gonna start with a laptop with my micro SD card that's gonna go in my Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B Plus. I do need a sleeve for it. I'm going to insert my micro SD card into its sleeve and put that into my computer slot right here on the side. And then we can go from there flashing the micro SD card. So there are three websites that you should visit as you're starting this project. Um, number one, you want the uh, source code for your micro SD card for your OctoPi. It is located at github.com guysoft forward slash OctoPi. I will link to this in the description field below. This GitHub page will appear and then you wanna scroll down just a little bit and there's a big button right here. It says download OctoPi and I'm gonna download OctoPi right now. And I see it's downloading. The next thing you need to have is Etcher. It, the website is etcher.io. It is a free download and it works for Windows and Linux and Mac OS. So I have a Mac. I've already downloaded it onto my computer, so I'm not gonna download it this time. It is pretty self-explanatory to make sure that you have this on your computer. So you do need to install etcher.io on your computer. The other piece of software you need installed on your computer is Atom.io. There are other ways of doing this. Atom is my favorite way of doing this. It is a free download and it is available on different uh, platforms as well. I have a Mac, so it automatically defaults to Mac. So I already have this um, installed on my computer. This is Etcher, we'll need that first. And as soon as this finishes downloading, I will be able to flash my micro SD card with this new image. Now, I believe I have this downloaded, this OctoPi. I'm going to my Etcher IO and I'm gonna hit select image and here it is. It's the first, it's the last of my downloads. Hit open, then I'm gonna select my drive. There it is, it found it. I'm gonna select that, continue, and then I'm going to flash this. I need to type in my password first. And there we go, it's gonna take a couple minutes to flash, so I'll be right back. And uh, it is finishing up the flash. The flash is complete. Yes, excellent. I'm going to close out my etcher. Now on my computer, it automatically ejects 
my micro SD card here. So what I'm going to have to do is take it out of my computer and then plug it right back in to my computer over here and it should come right back up on my desktop. You see it says boot now so that the image is on my micro SD card. I'm going to double click on that and you can see all of the files on there and I'm going to scroll down until I see a file called octopi-wpa-supplicant.txt and we need to modify this file so it will get on my wireless network. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to open it with Atom. Now there are instructions on how you can do this with a text editor. Here on this page it is described here in detail. For me Atom is just easier to use now on my Atom and there are instructions on this page. Follow these instructions on how you can get it onto your a wireless network and I'm going to show you how I did it. So my wireless network is a WPA or WPA2 network so I need to uncomment by taking out these pound symbols or hashtags and I'm going to put my SSID right here and my password right here and this is not my real SSID nor is it my real password but for the purposes of this video fill in your real SSID and your real password right here and then we're going to scroll on down uncomment for your country I am in the US I'm going to comment the Great Britain United Kingdom and I'm going to uncomment country equals US and I am going to hit save and then I'm going to uh, quit Adam and then I'm going to go into my finder and I'm going to eject the boot drive. It is now ejected. I can safely pull out my micro SD card and insert it into my Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B+. We just finished flashing our micro SD card and I am going to insert it into my Raspberry Pi 3B+. Okay, and here we go. So this is the, the cable that connects the printer to my Raspberry Pi. And here's my webcam and here's here I'm going to connect my webcam with USB and then last but not least we're going to power up our Pi right here and uh, that's what I need and we're back we have our Raspberry Pi booted up attached to our 3D printer now I'm switching over to a screen record and I'll show you how I configured everything on my Raspberry Pi now I'm back on the github page with OctoPi where I downloaded it next I'm going to scroll down just a little bit just to show you how I got to here next I'm going to it's going to say OctoPrint is located at octopi.local so I'm going to open the link in a new tab let's see if this works or not if it's booting up and we go right into a setup wizard all right excellent right here so I'm gonna hit next so uh, you do want to set up access control even though it's within your own um, network so uh, you can make this anything you want anytime and I'm going to hit next and then I'm gonna say keep access control enabled I'm gonna hit next right here um, online connectivity check it will check regularly if it is connected to the internet I'm going to enable that and I'm going to hit next enable blacklist plug-in blacklist processing right I'm going to hit yes enable I'm going to hit next then um, if you have a slicing profile you can import that I do not I'm going to click next my, the name of my printer is a net a8 and on model a net a8 hit next um, oh wait go back to default printer profile almost forgot previous so print bed and print volume origin lower left and heated bed I'm going to do 220 220 is the width and the depth of my 3d printer I'm going to use next got some safety information here I'm going to read this and I'm going to click finish and that is the basic setup um, so now we're going to go into plugins. I'm going to tell you about the plugins that I like to use that I have set up here. And I'm going to go into Plugin Manager. And so the, it does come with preloaded plugins. Get more. And then, so the first one I like is the TP Link Smart Plug one. I'm going to install that one. Okay, I'm going to close that. And the other one I re really like is Touch UI. 
Now, this was important back when I had an LCD screen. It is also important if I'm going to look at OctoPrint from a smartphone or a tablet as well. So I'm going to install that. And that is done, so I'm going to close that out. And then another one that's very useful is shut down printer. Okay, I'm going to close that out and Astro Print. That's also very useful. All right, and those are my favorite plugins that I like to use. And in order for them to work, I need to restart my OctoPrint server right now. I'm going to hit proceed. And this will take a few minutes. I'll be right back when this is done. And my OctoPrint server has restarted now. I'm going to hit reload. And it should all come back to life here, hopefully. Let's go through the plugins that I went through. So let's start with AstroPrint. And I'm going to get an API from AstroPrint. I'm going to sign into my AstroPrint account, then go into settings, and then get my API key. And then I'm going to hit AstroPrint, open AstroPrint tab. Then I'm going to introduce my API key, and I'm going to link my AstroPrint account. Okay, and yes, I authorized this request. And now I am on AstroPrint. And there is an update. Okay, so I do need to update OctoPrint. I downloaded it just a second ago. I'm going to hit update now. And it is going to go through another restart. So let's do that and I'll be right back. And my OctoPrint server has restarted. I'm going to reload my web page now and I should be back in. Uh, with your printer on, you may need to hit the connect button here and make sure that you are connected uh, to OctoPrint with your printer on. Okay, excellent. I'm back in. I'm going to hit this wrench icon again to get to my plugins. Let's get back to con configuring my plugins. Next, I want to configure Cura. And you don't configure it here from the plugin. You actually have to configure it from the API. So you want to get your API key. I'm going to hit copy on my API key. Then I'm going to go over to my Cura and I'm going to hit printer. I'm going to add a printer. Now I do not have any of these printers here. I have an ANET A8. I don't see that on here. So I am going to select Prusa i3 and I'm going to hit add printer. And then I'm going to go back into printer. I'm on Prusa i3. I'm going to hit manage printers. Then I'm going to connect to OctoPrint. I'm going to take that API key I just copied from my OctoPrint and paste it here. And then I'm going to hit connect and it should connect to OctoPrint. So it's waiting for a print job. I'm going to hit close. Now I need to find something to print and I'm going to put on a model and uh, Kira slices it right up and I've got all my settings here. I'm going to hit print with OctoPrint over here. I'm already connected. It has started printing. It is now heating up the print bed. Out of the box, it is going to work with our 3D printer. All that very complicated setup I did in that last video, you really don't need to do that. It really kind of works out of the box with this image that you uh, flash onto your micro SD card and it even works with the with the camera. So here is a camera, you just hit control. We used an image, we configured the Wi-Fi and plugged it into our printer and boom, it worked and you can configure it the way that you wanna configure it to, to work with OctoPrint and your 3D printer. Hopefully this was useful to you. If so, uh, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye.